Hey, this is Jared Zonerich from Major League Hacking, and I'm going to be giving a talk on building your first website. So, uh, you really, anybody can watch this talk. Uh, you don't need any prior experience. Uh, if you've never touched any web technologies before, this is the talk for you. Or if you've never programmed before, uh, this is also for you. We'll be starting from scratch and helping you build your first website. Uh, so, let's get started. So, uh, I'll, I'll be talking about this from the scratch. Uh, of course, uh, it might be slower for people who've already programmed or faster, but bear with me. So, okay. So, uh, how the web works is pretty much each web URL uh, pulls an HTML file. So, there's three main languages, or so there's three main languages of the web HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We're not going to be really talking about JavaScript in this tutorial. It's more, but uh, to break it down for you, HTML is what you see, the content. CSS is the styles of the content, like how it's how it looks pretty, how it looks, and then JavaScript is any animation. So anything after the page loads that changes, that's usually JavaScript. So uh, to start, uh, we want to use a text editor. I prefer to use Sublime Text, which is a text editor specifically for programming, but you can use anything from like TextEdit, Microsoft Word's a text editor, I wouldn't suggest that, but let's just go and download Sublime Text, that's what I'll be using. Uh, again, you don't have to use it, but... So just Google Sublime Text and it'll come up, sublimetext.com, you can click download, and then uh, just download for your platform here. I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to do it again, but yeah. So uh, just as you see on this website, uh, like the word sublime, the word sublime text here, download. This is all HTML written, uh, which we'll be talking about first. But uh, this comes from the HTML file, and CSS is the language that makes it look nice. So uh, yeah, okay. So once you have it downloaded, uh, we're just gonna pull up Finder or Explorer or whatever file manager you use. And let's just create a new folder in here. We'll call it my first website. Great. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to open up Sublime Text. Uh, let me just move this over for you. Open up Sublime Text and then go to File, Open. And you can click My First Website here. Uh, that'll just open up the project. Uh, we'll just close the other. That'll open up the project you can use, uh, whatever text editor you use, uh, it doesn't matter. We're just going to be creating files in here. This just makes our lives easier. Okay, so once we have our folder opened in Sublime Text, we're going to make, make a new file. Uh, so file, new file, and uh, we're going to call it, so and then we'll go to file save, and we're going to call it index.html. Most websites actually uh, have an index page, which is pretty much the first page you see. Uh, I'll just go back to Chrome to show you. Uh, so if we go to uh, if we go to mlh.io, uh, this let's see once it loads, this main page uh, is the index page of our website. So uh, that's pretty much what loads when you don't have anything at the end. If you go to like uh, slash about. This way, you're you're going to the about endpoint, and that's going to load up a different page. But slash index is the main page. Just you don't always need to include it. And this this didn't work because we made it so you can't do that. But uh, for static sites, it works. Uh, what's a static site? You ask. A static site is pretty much a website that uh doesn't change. So a dynamic site will be different for user to user. Uh, in other words, you can log into a dynamic site, but a static site is the same for everyone. We're going to be working on a static site now, uh, so uh, yeah, let's get started. So the first, the first thing you need in an HTML file is a, something called a doc type. Uh, I'm going to type it here, and then explain it. So it's pretty much. Uh, let me just make this bigger so you can see. Cool. So a doc type is just tells the browser we're using 
Well, this doc type specifically says we're using the newest version of HTML and just tells the browser how to understand what we're typing. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just include it at the beginning of your files and you should be good. So, uh, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Uh, and that's just a style of the language. So I'll talk more about that as we go on. So the first thing you need is uh, to enclose HTML tags. So what that is is just type a less than sign, then HTML, then a greater than sign, and then just press enter and type in another less than sign, then a slash, then HTML, then a greater than sign. So everything inside here is your website. Uh, almost everything in HTML works like this with a beginning tag, which is the first one, and an ending tag, which is the second one. Uh, it signifies ending with the slash, so anything inside here is part of the HTML tag. I, these things are called tags. So uh, what's inside here? Uh, so we have two, th two major things, and it's going to be the same style as HTML, so a beginning and an end tag. Uh, I would indent here. Uh, just press tab. Like it's good practice to indent because it makes your code much cleaner and more readable. It's not mandatory. Your code will still work, but it's easier to edit. So I highly recommend it. So indent and type in less than sign, h e a d head, and then less than sign, uh, and then enter. Oops. Then press enter and then less than sign slash head. So that opens and closes the head tag. Let's do the same with body. Cool. So basically, uh, to explain these two, so head is everything that's loaded on your page and the stuff you don't really see, and body is all the text on your page. So let's just write inside body, hello world. Every programmer has to start with a hello world program, so just following tradition here. So how do we see this? Let's test it out. So if you go back to Finder, where your file is located, and we navigate to index.html, all you have to do is drag this into your browser. So we're using Chrome here, so just drag it into Chrome. And there we go. It's open. Hello world. We now have our first website. Congratulations. The tutorial is over. Thank you for watching. No, just kidding. OK, we have a lot more to do. Uh, so we have hello world here. And uh, it says index.html. This is kind of weird. Usually when I go to a site, like if I go to Google, it'll tell me Google. It won't tell me the URL. So let's actually try to change this. So this would appear in the head because it's not actually content on the page. Like this part of the page is content. So this part is the body. And like everything else you don't see is head. So we'll change the title. So what we do is, like we've been doing, we open and then close a title tag. Like this. I'm just putting it on one line. Uh, it's the same thing though. And indent this inside the head, just so you know. So inside the title, we put whatever we want the title to be. So let's do my first website. Exclamation point. So remember to save it. And yeah, if you had any problems with Hello World showing, you have to always save stuff. And to view it again, you just go back and refresh the page. And boom, my first website. Great. So we have our first website. Uh, what do we need now? Uh, uh, let's, make, let's make Hello World a bit bigger. Uh, and let's change this. So let's delete Hello World, actually. I don't want that. I want, uh, so I want like a big text just to say what this website's about. So there's, there's four different types of tags for this in HTML called headers. Uh, I'll type it here. So we have, we could do a header one, and then there's also a header two. There's a header three, and there's a header four. Uh, header ones are the biggest, and header fours are the smallest. I'll just demo it for you and put them all here, but you can choose whichever one you want. So uh, I'll just do one, two, three, and four. And I'll save the file. And then I'll navigate back to Chrome and refresh. And there you see. So let's just do one. Let's make it big. And I'll call this uh, my first website. 
great. Let's just refresh to make sure it works. Uh, I'm just saving with command S so you don't you see you won't see me. So my first website. Great. So what's next? Um let's part I wanna put some stuff down here, but I wanna separate it from the title. So I wanna I kinda wanna line across the screen. So in HTML, these are called horizontal line, horizontal rules, just horizontal lines. So uh, the tag for that is an HR. So uh, you would expect it to be like this, because most tags need to open and close in HTML, as I said. But there's actually a few exceptions. Some tags uh, are self-closing tags, what it's called, which means you don't need the closing tag, and you can just put a slash before the greater than sign. This slash is actually optional, but uh, I prefer to use it because it's more clear to me. And a lot of pe some people use it, some people don't, but stay consistent. So let's just use it. So less than sign hr slash greater than sign. So let's let's refresh the page. And there we go. We have a line across it. So uh, let's put some content down here. I want a smaller. I want a. I want a h2. So the smaller, the second largest header. And we'll say, uh, uh, let's call it, I, mean, I want to make my website about Drake. So I'll just write Drake here. Or all about Drake. All about, yeah, let's do that. So there we go. We have it here. Um, and let's put, uh, I want to put a quote by Drake. So uh, none of these are quotes, but we have something called the paragraph tag, which is P. So it's a normal tag, so we have to open it and then close it, and just put an enter between it, and then you put your text between those, as we've been doing. So uh, let's do started off local, but thanks to all the haters. I know G4 pilots on a first name basis. Cool. So let's refresh the page and see what happens. Oh, what? Why is this one line? I put it two lines here, I pressed enter. That's weird. So in HTML, actually, you have to specify new lines. So what we do for that is we call it a break line, and much like the horizontal line, it's a self-closing tag. So we're gonna do less than sign br slash greater than sign. And let's go back and refresh, and there we go, two lines. So, uh. I kind of want to put an image here so people know who's saying this. Uh, so let's. Uh, so how we do that? An image tag, uh, IMG, but it's also self-closing. So it would be IMG slash this. But uh, where do we specify what image we want? There's actually something called an attribute. So an attribute. So we know image is the tag, IMG is the tag, and inside the tag are attributes, which are. Um, Pretty much uh, s things that are specific to the tag. So, like different features and stuff like that. So, this is where it'll find the image. So, we can tell it the image tag what image to display by typing src for source equals quotation marks. And inside the quotation marks, we'll put a link to the image. So, uh, let me just find the, let's just find the image and then I'll show you. So, just go on Google Images. Once it loads, uh, so we'll have to search Drake. Uh, I like this picture. Let's do this one. All right, so we just click view image, and I'm just getting the URL here and copying it, and then putting it into Sublime and putting it inside the source. So that's how an attribute works. This is the attribute title, SRC, and this is the value in quotation marks, the link. You need the quotation marks and you need the equal sign, otherwise it won't know what you're saying, and you'll get a lot of bugs. So um, let's refresh the page and see what it looks like. Wow, that's a big image. I kind of want it a little smaller. Uh, so the image tag, there's more attributes, such as width and height. So as we would expect, width equals quotation marks, and inside the quotes. Uh, so the original image is 650 by 430, it says. So I kind of want to make it half as big. So we can do 325. And then for height equals quotation marks, uh, 215. And that's just, I just divided with the, uh, the width and height by two. 
there we go, half as big. Okay, so let's go back to our uh, HTML file, and I kind of want to. Uh, I think I think I think these should all be centered, especially the image. Uh, actually, let's make everything in the paragraph tag centered. Uh, so that's the quotes only. So centering is also an attribute, just like width, height, and source. So we can type align equals center. And there we go. This is center. Okay, so let's go. Uh, I kind of want to, right after here, right after the image, I want to list uh, what? I want I want to list my uh, favorite Drake songs. So we can do, uh, so there's two types of lists. There's an ordered list and an unordered list. Ordered lists have numbers like one, two, three, and unordered are just bullet points. So um, let, let's do ordered list. Uh, so that's OL is the tag. So open it, close it. So OL slash OL. And then inside for each bullet point, it's called the list element or the list LI and not element, I'm sorry. So less than sign LI, greater than sign, less than sign slash LI, greater than sign. And that's just one element, so we'll say uh, Know Yourself. That's a pretty good song. And then uh, we'll put here, uh, we'll just copy and paste that, and then I'll just write Six Man. So let's go back and see what it looks like. There we go. Number one, number two. It automatically adds the numbers for you. So let's go back to our file, and let's add an unordered list. So that's UL. I'm just going to add this after. So LI. Uh, and let's for this let's do uh, let's call it make it a list of my favorite websites. I like Google because, as we know, all programmers uh need to Google everything and don't remember. So like, what does li stand for? HTML because I actually don't remember. Uh, list item. There we go. So uh, so what's another website I like? Um. Uh. I like the Rap Jared Knows Spotify playlist. That's a good one. You should check it out. So we'll do slash ul. So let's just check, test this out and see what it looks like. Awesome. So uh, let's just give it titles. So we can call the, we'll do h3s for the titles. So favorite, favorite Drake songs, uh, h3. Oh, I forgot back to back. We need that there. I'm just gonna add another li. Great. Uh, so then after the ol, I'm gonna put another h3 for another title. So favorite websites. So let's just refresh, and there we go. Favorite Drake songs and favorite websites. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, but I kind of want to put a link there. I like. I can't really click these. I want to click it and be able to go there. So. What we call a link, a link in HTML is an anchor tag, so that's just an A. So we'll do A and surround it by the A. And then, like a image, uh, where it points to is specified through an attribute. So it's called href href equals put quotation marks, and we can type in HTTP colon slash slash Google dot com, or just www whatever you want. And then for wrapped iron nose, we'll do the same. A href equals, and then the link. So uh, it should be tinyurl.com slash rjk playlist. And then we'll do slash a. Remember to close your tags, because otherwise the link will be the rest of the page. So let's just go back and check. And there we go. We can click it. And we go to Google. Nice. OK. So. Uh, I, I know there's another website I want to put here, but I don't remember it right now. So I just want to write a note to myself. Uh, so I'll do uh, add more sites here. But the problem here is this will show up on the page. I want it just to be a note to myself. So in HTML, there's something called, and most languages, there's something called a comment. So pretty much uh, a comment is made by making a less than sign, exclamation point, and then two hyphens. And it's ended with two hyphens, then a greater than sign. Uh, so this the site won't see it all. So if I refresh, it's gone, and it's just for me to, and myself to see. Okay. Uh, so th and this is a pretty good website. Uh, but it's kind of ugly. Like, I kind of want to put more designs on it. 
So uh, we're going to need CSS for that. So go ahead and create a new file. And we're going to call this file when you save it. Uh, let's call it styles.css. Great. Um, so what we're going to do here is we need to link to the CSS file. Otherwise, the HTML file will never see it. So in the head, we need a link. So we're going to type less than sign link. It's the link tag, like we've been doing. And rel equals style sheet type equals text slash CSS. And href equals styles.css, the name of our file. Uh, I won't worry too much about uh, all these attributes, just worry about href and where it's pointing to, but include these two because you need them. This is what tells it it's looking for a CSS file. So uh, let's go back to our style sheet and let's just let's so let's talk about how CSS works in general. So CSS, you give it uh, what part of the page you want to style and then some rules for styling. So say we want to style the whole body, the whole page. We can type in body, space, and then two curly braces. And inside these curly braces are going to be the rules we want to give it. So these two titles, I kind of want to make them both, uh, actually, only the first title. I want to make the first title big. So let's call it, let's give it something called an ID, because I don't want to change every H3. I only want to change this one. So let's call it, give it an ID, and say, uh, song hyphen title. It, it could be whatever you want the ID. And then if we go back to CSS, we can type in number sign, song hyphen title, and then curly braces like we've been doing. Now let's make the font hyphen size, colon. Uh, let's make it big. Let's make it 20 pixels, 20 pixels, semicolon. Remember pic PX for pixels, uh, except that didn't work. Uh, Let's see, why did that not work? Maybe it was 20. Yes, it was 20 already. So we made it 30. It's much bigger. Uh, so uh, what do we want to do next? Uh, let's talk about something called classes. I want to change the second uh, list element in each list and make it just apply some styles to it. So I don't want to change everything. But So the thing about IDs are you can only use them once. So song title, we can't put anywhere else. But classes, you can put as many times as you want. So in the li for six man, I'm going to type in class equals. And we'll type in, uh, we'll call it second, uh, second element. And we'll do the same thing for wrapped error notes. Great. So let's go back to our uh, style sheet. So. We use the number sign for IDs, but we can use the uh, period for classes. So we'll type in period, second, hyphen, element, curly braces. And then we can give it some uh, styles. So let's change the font. So we can do that by saying font, hyphen, family, colon, and then give it a font. Uh, this font is available on most computers, so we'll do that, called impact. And then uh, let's also make it uppercase, so we could do text hyphen transform colon and just type in up, uppercase let's try this and there we go now they stand out um what else should we do uh we can let's uh give it cool so uh let's change this image i want i want everything up here centered so there's something called a div which is pretty much it groups different elements on your page so let's put this in a div, and we're, ju we're just going to put a div around it. So uh, we'll end it with favorite Drake song. So we'll put end the div before that. So open the div and then end it. And we're just going to indent all this. Uh, just highlight it and press tab, and Sublime Text will indent it. And then let's also give the div an ID. We'll call it, actually, we'll just we'll do a class because maybe we want to do it again. And we'll say, uh, we'll call it a section. So save your file, and let's go back and let's give a section class, and uh, let's let's give this div a width. I only want it to be fifty percent of the page, 
and let's also give it a background color. Let's make it red. And now let's refresh. There we go. Uh, let's, let's center it too. So there's a little trick to center it. You just type in margin left, auto, and then margin right, auto. And there we go, all about Drake. But uh, let's also align the text to center. So we could do text align center. And there we go, all about Drake. And, and it's so easy to add it to these other two. So if we want more sections, we can just make more divs. So we can do div class equals section. And we can put this around our other things. So let's put it around our ordered list and indent. And then let's put it around our unordered list. And remember to indent. And let's refresh. And there we go. Everything's in the center. Um, but I kind of want to put a more, like, it ends right as the image ends. Let's give it some more space there. Uh, so that's called padding in CSS. So we can give this some padding on the bottom. So padding hyphen, hyphen bottom. And let's give it 10 px, 10 pixels, and refresh. And there we go. We have a little bit more. But I kind of want to put some padding on the top, too. So let's do padding, oops, padding top. And let's do that 10 pixels, too. And on the right and left, uh, it's good here, but here I kind of want it more. So we can do padding right, oops, padding right, and we'll do 20 px and padding left, and that can be 22. There we go. But there's a, actually a quick shortcut we can use for this. We can type in padding, and then the top and bottom, if it's the same, we could just do 10px, sorry, 10px, then 20px. 10px uh, is the top and bottom, and then 20 is the right and left, and this does the exact same thing. It's just a quick shortcut. Let's refresh. Uh, ooh, there's one thing. Uh, let's fix that. Let's add a margin to the bottom of all of them. Uh, let's give it 20 px, 20 pixels. There we go. Three different sections. Great. Uh, so I let's see. Okay. So one more thing. I want Drake to really stand out here and here. So, but like a div is a big section. There's something like a div called a span. And that's supposed to be an inline section, so like one word. So let's give it span class equals Drake. Class equals Drizzy. Change it up. And then slash span and the span. So we're just going to put it around the word Drake. Do the same thing down here. Class equals Drizzy. And then end the span. And then down here, we can do class Drizzy. And we'll. Let's let's make it uppercase text text transform uppercase. Uh, let's make the font size uh, thirty px, and then let's add. Uh, and that's good for now. And let's just refresh. There we go. Favorite Drake songs. And uh, so this is pretty much how you change it. Uh, just one quick tip before I leave you. Say I wanted to see what this would look like uh, in a different color. In Chrome, you can right-click and click Inspect Element. And it'll bring up this thing on the bottom, which will let you change the styles without refreshing the page. Just, it, when you refresh the page, it'll clear them, but uh, it'll let you add more stuff. So if we wanted to add color uh, red, we could do that and just see what it looks like, which is really useful. But if we refresh, refresh the page, it's going to disappear, and all our changes are going to be gone. So it's good to test stuff out. Great. So uh, now we have our first website. Uh, even though it might not be the most meaningful website ever, uh, now you have your first website, and you can use these things we learned today uh, to build pretty much any site you want. I encourage you, if you've never built a website before, to go right now and build uh, a website about your favorite artist or build a website just about yourself, just like a re online resume. So uh, I... I wish you good luck with that, and I hope you learned a lot from this. Thank you.